everyone, my name is Carl. You may have uh, seen me around Portland or uh, heard me on our podcast uh, called Enlighten Mike. I'm part of Team Galaxy Brain and we're here to chat a little bit about uh, Katsu. We're, we're starting a new thing. We're doing a, a 101 series with the idea to explain heroes in a little bit more depth um, for newer players. So if you're an experienced fab player, and, you know, you've played against Katsu and you understand what Katsu's trying to do, this probably isn't the video for you. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, we, we do think that this could be uh, a benefit for, for the community. So, so hopefully if you're watching, uh, the idea here is to, to explain a little bit more about Katsu, how it works, and if it's the right hero for you. I personally love Katsu, and uh, we'll get into talking a little bit about why. So just a high level overview, some of the stuff we'll talk about is the actual hero power itself, the available archetypes to Katsu and, and kind of how it plays. We'll talk about some of the key equipment, some of the key cards that go in the deck, and then we'll look at an example combo line and, and talk a little bit about the differentiators for, for Katsu and, and how it plays out compared to other ninjas. So as far as the hero power is concerned, you know, we have the young one on the left and the adult hero on the right. It says, when an attack action card you control hits, you may discard a card that costs zero. If you do, search your deck for a card with combo, banish it face up, and shuffle your deck. You can play it this turn. So the idea here is that Katsu is going to have different uh, well, combo lines in the deck with the intention to uh, grab some of those combo pieces while discarding others that you might not need in order to complete that combo line. So uh, what, what I mean by that is, um, and we'll get into a little bit more later, but there's several cards that line up in a row. And if you line them up in a particular order and attack with them in a particular order, you get the, the combo text. So uh, we'll dive into archetypes a little bit. First, I'll just chat briefly about mid-range. The idea behind mid-range is that you, you spend some of your cards blocking uh, efficiently as possible and you spend some of your cards uh, attacking as efficiently as possible. So uh, both Flick Flack um, and other uh, zero cost defense reactions are, are part of that mid-range package, we'll call it. If you look at Flick Flack, it says, and this is a defense reaction, right? So you get attacked and you move to reactions and you play Flick Flack. As you can see, this, this card is gonna stop uh, four damage. And it says the next attack. Uh, this turn that you block, if you block it with a combo card, it gets plus two defense. So this one would block for four, and then this one would block for five, right? For a total of nine blocked between your two cards. That's some of the most efficient uh, damage blocking in the game. Uh, and then the other arch archetype, and probably the most common, is aggro. Uh, <clears throat> this is this is where we're trying to put uh, combos together as much as possible. We're trying to leverage particular equipment uh, as best we can in order to draw more cards. And, and we want to, this is another strategy called going wide, right, with aggro where you play lots of different cards. We want to play out these different cards to, to complete that combo path. So here's an example. We're going to play a leg tap. It costs one and attacks for four with go again. On the follow-up, we play... For zero, a rising knee thrust. Now normally this only attacks for three and doesn't have go again, but because we played Blake Tap before, this is the combo text line, we can <clears throat> we can attack for five, right, plus two, and it has go again. And now uh, imagine we didn't have a rising knee thrust in our hand. If we hit with leg tap, we could discard something else that costs zero. It could be any card that costs zero, a flick flack, for example. We go find rising knee thrust out of our deck, and then we, we slam this puppy down for five damage. And then we followed up with a blackout kick at the end, where if rising knee thrust was previous, then we get to uh, add plus three to this attack. And this is normally just one for four, right? So uh, that would be a total of 16 damage because we put the combo line together. And this is where the, the strength of Katsu really lies, is, is the ability to put these, these combo lines um, <clears throat> all in a row and maximize the, the uh, the card output and efficiency with those cards. Now, um, I would I would also add that uh, generally Katsu has like lots of combo cards in the deck, and, and what I'm getting at is you usually have more than one 
combo line. So along with that comes the ability to um, you know, understand what combo lines you have in your deck so that you know if there's a rise and knee thrust in your deck or not, right? That takes some practice to get to. And uh and, and with just some you know some repetitions with the deck, you you get there pretty quickly. Especially if you put together, you know, for example, just just the leg tap combo and the Lord of Wind combo. Just have those two in your deck for now and practice getting those combo lines out together using Cops' ability. Now I would also point out that on, on Cops' ability, and I'll, I'll jump back to it real quick here, it says, when an attack action card you control hits. Well, that means that it ha only happens on the first one that hits. So if, if we're looking back at this uh, leg tap combo, if the leg tap hit and you already had a rising knee thrust, but you didn't have a blackout kick yet, you would have to go get the blackout kick when the leg tap hit. Right? So it requires a little bit of planning in order to, to complete the combo like you want to. So I'll talk about some of the key equipment. Uh, <clears throat> Mask of Momentum is, is probably the uh, the core to a Katsu deck. Uh, now this is a bit of a higher dollar card, so I, I put in some alternatives. But if you were to, to ask me you know, and say, Carl, I really like Katsu. I, I can only really get one piece of legendary equipment right now. Which one should I get? It would absolutely be a Mask of Momentum. Now, that's if you're specifically wanting uh, to play Katsu, right? So there's another discussion we can have about overall bot value of a card. For example, Spring Tunic is played in a lot of decks, but Mask of Momentum is, is definitely the centerpiece of a Katsu deck. Now, if <clears throat> Mask of Momentum wasn't on the table, uh, Mask of the Pouncing Link is very, very affordable card and also works. And, and what this allows you to do is to, to go out and fetch a card with power two or less. <clears throat> so we have uh, yet another way to complete our combos here. So uh, the next piece uh, that we would talk about would be uh, Fiendal Spring Tunic. I mentioned this a moment ago. This is uh, another high dollar piece of equipment. So, so we have an alternative that would work well also. But uh, again, this is uh, another core component or important piece to the deck. This, this allows us to have a uh, more effective and efficient turn that we might not be able to have before. Best of the First Fist is an excellent alternative. Uh, this is a common, so it's it's really just pennies. So when an attack action card you control hits, it's a triggered ability, so you can destroy the vest to get two resources. And, and the key part of it being a triggered ability is it doesn't break your chain. Because in order for the combo to work, you have to have those all on the combat chain. Now, <clears throat> uh, next Im important piece of equipment would be uh, uh, breaking scales. This is uh, for the arms. It's, it's battle worn, so it's like having an extra health, and you can destroy it in order to give a card with combo plus one. So we'll talk about uh, one of the combo lines later. But uh, whelming gust wave, for example, when you when you hit with it, it's going to draw you a card. So you can uh, you can force an opponent to respect the fact that you can give it plus one. Now they have to make a decision. Do they overblock or do they let you use your equipment but you have to draw a card? So there's lots of decision points that you put in front of your opponent that aren't always easy uh, to choose. And of course, uh, harmonized kadachis are uh, another core component of Katsu. Uh, there's there's also Autumn's Edge, but it, it's not nearly as good as the harmonized kadachis. And, and the reason is because in order to pay for these, what we recommend putting in your deck are zero cost blues right so blues pitch for three and if they cost zero that means harmonized kanashi is going to get go again it's just it's just innately better than than an autumn's touch so you run two of these puppies and you're able to for example pitch a blue attack with two kadachis and then on that third hit you get to threaten a mask trigger right once per effect when an attack action you control so third or higher to hit draw a card so if we do kadachi kadachi hit hit and on that third one, we get to draw a card. We're again forcing our opponent to make a tough decision on whether or not we want them to block or we get to draw a card. And then uh, a little bit out of order here, but uh, Snapdragon Scalers is another important piece because it gives your attacks go again. Now, this, this might seem a bit innocuous at first. Well, sure, go again is great, but it's especially important in combo. So if we go back and we look at that rising knee thrust combo again, if if we were if we didn't have a leg tap 
and we just put out a rising knee thrust and say these were the only two cards we had and we had it and uh, we had one resource available from our tunic we could put out a rising knee thrust attack for three right the combo text wouldn't take place because we don't have leg tap well then we can as an attack reaction give it go again with the snapdragon scalers and then follow up with a blackout kick for seven right so so suddenly what would only have been a three damage turn or maybe four damage right to attack with a blackout kick only is a 10 damage turn because we get to do a rising knee thrust give it go again and then follow up with the blackout kick so that's that's the strength of the the breaking scales so so now i wanted to touch a little bit on the key cards and th these are the different uh, lines available uh, this isn't necessarily all inclusive. Certainly, more lines become available today as you watch this video. But you can start with things like Rushing River Line, Open the Center Line, Rising Knee Thrust. There's also uh, a Crane Dance. There's there's several lines. So look look through the different lines that are available and kind of make the connections on what the different ones do. I'm not going to touch on every one of them because there's quite a few. And then probably the the most core to katsu is going to be the lord of wind line starting with surging strike which is just two for five attack with go again into the whelming gust wave that we talked about earlier this one is if your last attack with surging strike gets plus one go again if it hits draw a card this is part of the strength of of that lord of wind line and then uh, follow the Well and Gus Wave up with Mugenshi Release. Now, there's a lot of text on this card, but what this card lets us do if it hits is to go out and fetch all of the Lord of Winds that are in our deck. So if we're playing a classic constructed game and we have three Lord of Wind cards in our deck, we get to go fish out all three of them from our deck. And then if we follow up to Mugenshi Release with a Lord of Wind, we can then use the other two Lord of the Winds that we already have in our hand, right? Because we went and got three. And we can pitch those to put all of these combo components back in the deck. All except for Lord of Wind, of course. So that would be the Surging Strike, the Lonely Gust Wave, and the Mugenshi Releases. We get to put them all back into the deck so that we can continue to cycle through and continue to do the same combo, which is a very effective combo, multiple times throughout a game. So that's that's the, the core combo line that is for Katsu. And you can see that they are Katsu specialization cards as well. So they can only go in Katsu. So that's that's a real high level of uh, Katsu itself. You know, some of the differentiators is that there's, you know, a couple different ways to build it, uh, depending on the combo lines you want. You know, I've, I've had fun exploring like an open the center into a pounding gale combo line, which which open the center gets dominate and then pounding gale hits for double damage for one. Right. So a pounding gale could potentially deal 10 damage just on its own. And it doesn't always do that. Right. Because it, it scares the opponent into, into blocking. But that's that's part of the, the strength of Katsu as well. And then uh, <clears throat> This is going to be the easiest ninja to find your combo line, right? Because of his hero ability. Because we get to go and, and find that pounding gale or that open the center. Or we get to go find that rising knee thrust. So the, this, this is the ninja you want to play if you want to be putting combo lines together. And it even says it on the card, right? Katsu goes and fishes out a card from your deck that has the keyword combo on it. And the, the last piece that, that I personally have a lot of fun with is that Kodachis are incredible at ending the game. So Flesh and Blood is, is great. You guys are beating each other up. You're, you're getting each other's life totals down. You're preserving life where you can and, and, and dishing out as much damage as you can. And, and when it gets to that point where you're each at one health, almost all heroes in the game can't really handle the Kodachis because if you attack for one, they're at one, so they have to block with a card from their hand. And then Kodachi can have to block for a card with hand. And then if you attack for more than three, right, because most of their cards will block for either two or three, on that follow-up, they have to block with two cards. So now you've got their whole hand, and there's nothing else that they can do. So if you're ever able to get to a point where you can put just a small combo together or a small go-again line together at the end, you end the game in your complete control at that point. So, so that's, that's a little bit about Katsu. That's some of the things that I love. And uh, hopefully that gives you as a newer player a little bit more of an idea of what Katsu is trying to do and, and how he goes about it. So I'm Carl from uh, Team Galaxy Brain. 
you know, tune into Light and Mike where we, we talk about uh, everything from individual heroes to, to competitive scene and, and the meta breakdowns uh, throughout. And uh, if I don't see you at one of the major tournaments, then uh, hopefully I'll see you around Portland. Take it easy. Bye.